Hello guys, Bleenated! It's the end of another year, and you might know that these are the types of videos that I ended up posting to bring the New Year's occasion. Now, keep in mind as useful, this is, was the top 9 episodes of the year that which I think were interesting. Not every single episode on the non episode description to a stream video channel act that was released throughout the entire 12 months. So, without it being said, let's begin. These are the top 10 best non act episodes of 2022. <laughs> Number 10. Hey Dougie, the Christmas Batch. Now, as a jury of you know, I like chronicling all the new stuff that comes on longer over the last seven, eight years. Unfortunately, un unfortunately, nice schedules, nards, never races, has been out today recently. So unfortunately, our nine talks crashed and we had to get a new one. However, with this one, I decided to be more bit more traditional and like including some more to more holiday date episodes. Uh, unfortunately, I can't update the non release schedule yet, but I feel like this year, it will be more diverse to do the Christmas or holiday schedules first. In this case, for the longest Hey Dougie episode ever made, clocking in at 8 minutes and 30 seconds, it tells the story of Dougie's old ancient friend Quint, who is secretly disguised as Santa Claus, who unfortunately is coming down with the dunks at the most wonderful time of the year. You know, it's like one of those times, one of those Christmas stories where Santa thinks he unfortunately can't do it anymore. So Dougie and the squirrels decide to teach you an aquarium more about the holiday and fear their special traditional free necklace as way to help him overcome his dullness and fear of flying this greatest holiday celebrate at the end of December. Now, this episode also has an act video game adaptation of the same name besides, which I have played a few times and I did a few screenshot videos of it which you can see on my channel. You know, I'm not much of a gameplay type that I normally see, so it's just a gameplay screenshot videos instead. Aside from that, I feel like this episode is very special, as it helps Dory be introduced to someone who actually looks like Santa Claus in his world, and it helps introduce children to a new generation of some of the most special world who help bring in the holiday season. So overall, a very festive Doggy episode. Number 9. Santa Claus Go the Seas, a Pirate's Christmas Carol. At the first season of 2020, unfortunately, this and Three Kings Day are the only Santiago holiday episodes we've ever gone. In this one in particular, Sai realizes that Santa is actually a pirate in his world of the IOD and Kanta, and he's also been given the task to help Santa say Christmas for another one of those dumb, crazy fun adventures that Ricky III has unfortunately cooked up. Yes, this villain has the numerals the third three placed at the end of his name, and don't you forget it. Or else this voice actor Hunter is gonna be mad. Anyway, the sign of the majority of this episode basically has, you know, just the same sort of particular Spanish pirate thing that Santi is known for here. To be honest, I was always wondering what would happen if Santa Claus looked like a pirate and not an actual human. It's a really cool Spanish quality celebration, and I'm pretty sure no one's gonna forget anytime soon. Number 8 Control, don't save a ball hunter hunter. This is one of the three Christmas Carol with Charles Dickens episodes Cardi Swash Run says that this year has given us in 2020 coronavirus year. Even during the unfortunate times of uncertainty during the entire health virus pandemic of safety, social distancing, and face mask concerns, Charles Television Networks has still never failed to waste Nick's at least some decent quality content in any of our laugh. This episode is no exception, as that episode has Hunter being placed acting like enemies of Scrooge. And so Claus acting like, well, I'm not sure what ghost he would be, but let's assume that he's the ghost of Christmas present or future, which, you know, I'm pretty sure it's going to lead to, to the part of the plot episode where Hunter actually unfortunately dies. Which, unfortunately for her, this may not be happening, despite the fact, well, you know, he's voiced by the same art of talented horse guy. Still, this episode is still at least funny to crack some fun at how at how old and how long existent that Charles Dickens Christmas and all has been around. This one, however, in particular, as well as Santa's almost unfortunately realizing that Santa's been been missing his sleigh's broken and he unfortunately got the wrong knack instead of, you know, the adventure they won for Toronto Canada, and then the cultural dogs to help Santa get back on the right course. 
What's also really cool is the hilarious deck the halls parody work off at the end. That is true classic gold Charles Colony content right there. Number seven, Boom Guppies. How did Guppies save Christmas? Did another one of these Charles Dance Christmas Carol Party episodes released in 2020? Yes, they Jerry gave us three of them that year. Don't ask us why. This one from the Boom Guppies material is even funny because, you know, the one here is this book, a Wordle Humbug. No, seriously, the Humbug is a Wordle Bug insect. In this one, the Boom Guppies are whisked away to the North Pole. I want to see the Christmas holiday around the world. Now, unfortunately, as you expect, most of these episodes and this Christmas one in particular has unfortunately the same trope as most Bone Guys I've had since 2019. So, so unfortunately, the Bone Guys, including only Gold Zone in particular, are unfortunately terrible at telling reasons as quick on stories. Because the reasons why are 1. They ripped off the Red Guardians, which John Gunn Ward's Colossal worked on. 2. A droid that take off two thirds of the entire episode, and three, the villain characters they end up fighting off against are basically not villain characters at all to begin with. I mean, seriously, the guys in these Channel's 19 episodes where the stories are being really lazy here. I'm not sure if whether or not Nolan Gill and Zilli are on some type of drug and don't know crack, or, you know, they don't even realize that these villain characters weren't actually villains at all to begin with and just wanted to make friends with them. I mean, look at this hung up for example. All he wanted was just just spend Christmas with all the guppies on all the Nickelodeon friends, but unfortunately he doesn't even get the chance to live somewhere he has to spend it all alone in the solitude. Then yet again, this is a decent one, and the news feature here, the song featured in this episode is basically blocked, which I'm pretty sure won't get stuck out of your heads. Number 6. What's causing you? What's the New Year's dance party? As one of the first episodes of 2021, the first critical one to ring in the new year, I feel like what better way to bring in another 12 months than to, you know, just play a lot of music and everybody dance again to the groove like nobody's watching. Sorry, I just had to put that joke in for good news. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this episode is basically just dance on we just having the ultimate dance party down and stuff, and also the side that the Jerry Poker song in the end is really cool. I mean, you can also listen to this song on iTunes off the, the Dance, Shake, and Shitting Nick Jr. album, which also features the Shark Shake, Baby Shark promotion song, something called Screaming School Disney Channel Star, Drew Seeley. A song like that, one of the great episodes of all time for the Squeeze Quiz reboot. Number 5. The Adventures of Panton Bear 2019-2020 Reboot. Panton runs the cafe and makes a movie. Now, if you ask, no, this has no relation of revival than the 1971 2D Titan Bear series. This one is just a normal new episode in which Titan Bear writes words about his experiences throughout the show to his invisible aunt named Aunt Lucy, which unfortunately we ever, we've never got the chance to see what she, Aunt Lucy has even looked like yet. This one in particular shows Titan Bear reminiscing his adventures, trying to run a typical cafe diner restaurant, and also trying to make his first Nanny movie of some kind. I mean, aside from the 3D animation and stuff, this actually seems like normal really wholesomeness, and it falls one of the greatest British Trump's book characters of all time. Number 4 Dr. Pig, the Super Potato Movie! This is the one of these episodes of which they have been encountering this Potato City thing, where the quote unquote, the magic of eating fruits and vegetables never ends. No, seriously, that's one of Pepper's slogans, not mine. No one in particular sees Pepper and her family going to the New Year to see some sort of New Year on this Tail City character. However, this seems like some sort of coincidence, as like the very next year, 2021, Pepper Pig would star in a, f in a fictional film about vegetables in an episode story in which she goes to the US of A across the British pond. You mean, no, seriously, that actually happened to celebrate 10 years of Pepper Pig Aaron Nick Jr. here in the States. I mean, I really unfortunately feel bad that for Harley that she doesn't get the voice Peck Peck anymore, despite the fact she can still easily do the voice despite the fact she's not a five-year-old anymore. Overall, a very decent, funny talk rock episode, despite the fact that not everyone is into this series nowadays. Also, shout out to my friend Phil Scrum94, who is actually obsessed with this series and is probably his favorite preschool series of all time. Number three. What is in the North Machines? Recycling Tower. I think this episode is basically the pinnacle moment of the Blaze series' entire run. As this episode 
This is a film called Whitaker. The film is like this played by none other than the greatest karate artist of our generation, we're not for the Yankee Fig. You have to portray this Whitaker guy who unfortunately causes water to, and trash to fall all the way across the city and plays an agent at the clean up and turn the machine off before Yanko spreads out all the water and it explodes all over the place. <laughs> no, seriously, I, you know, something about this episode makes me, you know, want to do one of those Earth Day things now again. But I know, I just got to ask one question. When are we going to get a world talking down like this on Bay Einstein where he just spoofs all the classical music songs? Okay, good, no need to listen to her. No, seriously, Blaze getting a hand with Rio in that recycling episode. I don't think Blaze and Adrian Crusher are ever going to talk that. Number two, Run Through Times with Christopher Jackson and Hamilton. Sing our song, The Story of Aretha Franklin. The first of four episodes in the show's second season of the series featuring the Hamilton star, a Jewish John about great performers and figures of American history. This one here, we see Dallas of the Cafe, that show deserved more than two seasons, and I add, dressed up as one of the greatest female singers of our generation, the first one to win the famous Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, Aretha Franklin, who are the biggest hit of her time was, Oh yes, but it's a day, I don't want it, not so many. This one would take her you know, not actually singing the song instead of rocking the verse most of the time. You know, sounding like a hair clock beatboxing and stuff like that. But still, this song in this episode of this morning's original series is definitely not a reason showing us how great the spirit news can be to so great all the different types of people in the world coming together or girl of fashion sing song all across the globe. This episode is pretty sweet and it got a few of her fans crying tears of joy. Now before the number one talk code of position, Let's go over a few honorable mentions that I think are great episodes released this year, but still didn't make it to the top 10 on the list. And one of my most recent like, non episode countdown videos, and it's gonna go ahead and put all mentions just multiple new batches of new episodes from the original series me on this subscription series source because, like, all new is so good and, like, I just can't pick. So here we go. Alpha Beats with the Pawns, well, the cartoon version accompanies up the podcast released in 2021, the World's Daughters with Shannon Shark. We have the 1990s season 1 2 3 space with just both Poyong Uxo Games and various ways to their Amazon Prime channel and their YouTube account. Then we have the 99 season 3 of Nanny Carter, School of Young season 2 with Dan Core, and lastly, Your Friend season 2 with Stephanie Wong. And I'm saying, okay, without a doubt, that the number one best long and X ever video on Nanny Uxo released this year is Hey Dougie, the Stick Dash. Yep. This is first of the history thing, maybe first on these kind of videos here. I started and ended this knowing this of the year count of two episodes of the same series. Go figure. This one the terrorists are what I consider the episode of the entire series. All the quality is top notch, the animation is more high quality than it ever needs to be, and the song is so quiet that it turned to countless names that you can't even get on your head. I mean, I want to see this show. Whenever somebody comes to taking it down or even netching or saying hey doggy, it's this episode and song repeating the words stick and sticky over and over again that comes to mind. Like yeah, have fun getting that ditty out of your head. And there you have it. That's the last one I went down I'll put on the 10 best long episodes raced this year. Before I wrap up this video, I want to thank all of our viewers and fans, especially our YouTube channels of the over 12,160 subscribers. It's going to be very great as you probably name this strange source of wave of a different preschool network over the last 78 years. And it's way more fun to count in the next year to come. So on behalf of all of us, and until we meet again, he named Troll 2023, give you everything asked for, and you hope to have a great, wonderful New Year's.